Hello brothers and sisters of Christ. We did some small subjects and showing the house out and the property and everything. I thought it'd be a good time to get back to a solid Bible study. Are you ready for a solid Bible study? I am. So let's get your King James Bibles out and I'm going to start another series called Acknowledge Him in All Thy Ways. And what we're going to do is we're going to start going through some of the Bible, the Old Testament stories of men in the Old Testament, great men of God, how they, uh, when they fail to acknowledge God in all their ways, what got in the way? These great men of God, something got in the way, and they didn't acknowledge God and the what, what they were doing. Okay? And what got in the way? That's what we're going to talk about so we can learn from their mistakes and not make the same mistakes. Okay? Turn to Joshua 5.1. In your King James Bibles, turn to Joshua 5.1. Joshua is after, before Judges. Before Judges, after Deuteronomy. So turn to Joshua 5. Why are you turning to Joshua chapter 5? Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. What are you supposed to hide in your heart, brother, says Christ? The word of God, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Thy words are pure words, therefore thy servant loveth it. This is in the Psalms, King David. Uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. The Bible says, out of the buns of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you're hiding God's word on your heart, this is what's on your lips. This is how you talk. This is, I mean, this is what you stand for. You love quoting God's word, but that's your standards come from this. How you live your life, everything you do comes from this. Trust the Lord with all thine heart. If you're trusting God, then you're trusting this, God's word. And you're hiding it on your heart. But it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. What gets in the way of you trusting the Lord with all your heart? This would be like a whole nother study is you're trying to lean onto your own understanding. And we're going to see this with Joshua. Two times Joshua failed to acknowledge the Lord in all his ways. He starts going off his own understanding, his own intellect. Why? Because he's not, he, start, he stopped trusting the Lord with all his heart. Verse 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, in all thy ways. There's no part you get to hold back and say, this part of my life is just for me. I get to have my house, my home life, and my ministry life. No, your ministry is this right here. It's the temple for the Holy Ghost. This is the ministry, and it's everywhere you go. The Word of God is the ministry, and it's everywhere you go. Okay? There's no part of your life that's private that you get to keep separate from God. When you get saved and born again, you give the old man to... You give the old man to Jesus Christ at the cross. He gives you the new man, the new birth, the new creature in Christ Jesus. And from that day that he saves you and on, he's supposed to be in every aspect of your life. If you can't, we said this before, if you can't acknowledge him and what you're doing, then you shouldn't be doing it. It's just that simple. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. When you're acknowledging him, What's the, what's the evidence that you're acknowledging him in all your ways? He will direct your paths. He'll start telling you how to live, how to think, how to speak, how to treat people, saved and lost, how to treat people, how to handle things, how to handle different situations. Okay? Pray without ceasing. So I always tell brethren, start your day with the Word of God in prayer and end your day with the Word of God in prayer. And make sure you're talking to God throughout the day. Right? But for this study, it's in all thy ways acknowledge him. Okay, acknowledge him in all thy ways? Question mark. Did Joshua acknowledge him in all his ways? I had to look up the word acknowledge in the Webster's 1828 dictionary. What does it mean to acknowledge him? Some people just say, oh yeah, Jesus. Okay, and then they do what they want. I acknowledged him, Jesus, and then I just do what I want. Is that really acknowledging him? Webster's 1820 Dictionary, to own or notice with particular regard. In other words, to make the Lord, and this is me putting this down, in other words, to own or notice in particular regard. In other words, brothers and sisters Christ, 
You make the Lord and His way the foundation of all your ways. Now, some people say, like, if you've already been told this is, a, uh, this is the right way of doing something, this way is okay, the first time you get the okay from the Lord, you don't have to come to Him every single time and get permission, okay? But uh, eventually, in most of your life, you need to be asking, acknowledging God in everything. I still acknowledge Him, even in stuff that He's already said, yeah, that's okay, but I always say, Lord, if it be your will, I'd like to do this again today. If it be your will, I'd like to do that, Lord. If, the, if, if I can have your blessing on this... This is what I have planned today, you know, just with your day-to-day -day walk with the Lord. You acknowledge Him in everything. Lord, something doesn't seem right. Can you show me the truth? I don't get this, you know. You acknowledge Him. Okay. So when I, when I was looking at that acknowledge, you know, that the Lord is supposed to be the foundation of all your ways, and you're to seek His counsel in all things, okay, Romans 3, 4 says, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. What did we just read up there? Trust the Lord with all thine heart. Let God be true. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay. Let God be true, but every man a liar. And lean not on your own understanding. When you have, you have God's way and you have man's way, and they're always contrary one to another. Let every man be a liar. I can be doing things God's way, and I'm lining up with God. Or I can be doing things my way, the world's way. Okay? Let every man be a liar. Okay? God's way is true. The world's way, the, the, remember the three enemies. The flesh, the lust of the flesh. The flesh's way is wrong. It's not true. It's a lie. The world's way is contrary to God's way. It's a lie. Satan, the father of lies, he's the liar and the father of it, the Bible talks about. He was a liar from the beginning and the father of it. The lust of your father you will do. Okay? The Bible talks about. Satan's way, doctrines of devils, false religions, false antichrists, that antichrist spirit, that worldly spirit, it's a lie. Okay? Let every man be a, be a liar, as it is written, that thou mayst be justified in thy sayings, and mightst overcome them when thou art judged. God forbid, let God be true, every man a liar. Psalms 33, 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Remember when it says, acknowledge him to own or notice with particular regard. Lord, you own me. I want to do things your way. The Bible says that we were purchased. Know ye not that you're, that you're not your own? You were bought with a price? Feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood? And you regard God in everything that you do. Lord, is this good? Is this okay? Will you bless this, Lord? Am I allowed to do this? The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. I want his, his thoughts to be on my, of his heart to be the thoughts of my heart. His words to be my words. What he says is right, that's what I want to do. It's all about pleasing God, brothers and sisters Christ. It's all about pleasing God. Remember what the Bible says. That thou art worthy of glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. What pleases God? You go to the book of Ecclesiastes. He goes through and talks about the whole meaning of all these things in life that you do. It's vanity. It's vanity. It's vanity. Why is it vanity? Without God, all things are vanity down here. Everything that's done down here is vanity if there's no capital G God. If you're not acknowledging God in all your ways, it's vanity. And when you get to the end of the book, he says, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The whole book gets summed up. Fear God and keep his commandments. If you're acknowledging Him in all your ways, you're fearing Him and saying, Lord, is this okay? Is this the right way? Is it the wrong way? How am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed... Is it okay? Will you bless this, Lord? Will you bless that? Acknowledge, uh, fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Man was created to please God. This is the whole duty of man. What pleases God? Fearing Him and keeping His commandments. Well, how are you supposed to fear Him and keep His commandments if you're not acknowledging Him in all your ways? 
Okay. So what gets in the way of acknowledging the Lord in all your ways? There's certain things God brought to my heart when I'm going through the Old Testament over and over, and I went through Joshua, and I went through, you know, Moses. We'll do one on Moses. We'll do one on King David and King Saul, and so on and so forth, and Solomon. What gets in the way of you acknowledging the Lord in all your ways so He can direct your steps? One of the biggest things you could say right away is just so you read, and this is the, just the, if I could sum it all up in one thing, just with that scripture there, what keeps you from acknowledging Him in all your ways? Because you don't want Him directing your paths. You don't want God telling you what to do. You, want, you don't want God telling you, no, you can't do that. No, that's not the right way. Okay. That's one of the big ones. But we'll be starting a series of studies showing great men in the Bible and where they fail to acknowledge the Lord and what got in the way of doing it. Now, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And that's what we're going to be going off of. That the Word of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We're going to be reading some things that are just for the Jewish people, but we're also going to learn from their mistakes. Today we're going to be learning from Joshua's mistake. Two big mistakes that he made. Okay? We're going to be going off of instruction in righteousness. And remember Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It reads, For what sort of things are written aforetime were written for our learning, instruction, and righteousness. That we, through patience and comfort to the Scriptures, might have hope. We're looking for that blessed hope with the life that we're living. And as we're living, we're supposed to do what, brothers and Christ? Acknowledge Him in all our ways, and He will direct our paths. Things are so messed up out there today because they're not following this. All these false Christianity religions out there, they're so messed up. Why? Because they're not acknowledging God in all their ways. Why? Because they don't want God to be the final authority. They don't want God telling them what to do. They don't want God reigning in their lives. Ruling and reigning in their lives. Okay? So, let's get into it. That's just a little bit of an intro, but let's really get into it. So hopefully you've turned to Joshua chapter 5, verse 1. So let's get into Joshua. We're going to be talking about Joshua 5 and 6. You have the Lord leading Israel over Jordan and Joshua consulting the Lord. If you remember um, Moses, he got in trouble with the Lord. We'll be talking about that in another study. He got in trouble with the Lord and he couldn't go into the promised land. So the mantle of leader and you know judge got pushed or got passed on to Joshua, and Joshua's leading people in, and they're supposed to take this city called Jericho. There's a huge wall around Jericho. There's also the river. They got to get a, how, how are we going to get across the river? Then we got how are we going to get these walls down? How are we going to take this city? The city is fortified. All right. Joshua chapter five verse one it says, and it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites were on this on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their hearts melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. They started fearing Israel. But you see there, the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan. Lord, what do we do? God tells Joshua, because now God was dealing with Moses, his servant Moses. Now God's dealing with his servant Joshua. And, he, and Joshua's coming to him saying, Lord, what do I do? Okay, here's how you're going to go over the city. This is what you're going to do so you can get over this river. And they went over the river. Turn to Joshua chapter 6. Turn over to the next chapter. Verse 1. Okay. Now they've crossed the river because God's the one guiding them. They're acknowledging him in all their ways and saying, Lord, how do we get across here? God's showing them how to do it. They dry up the river. It was a big sign and wonder, miracle. And that made the people that lived in the area on the other side of the river, Jordan River, their hearts faint. Also reminds me of that verse where it talks about the time of Jacob's trouble, how people's hearts are failing them for fear. The signs and wonders that are coming down. The fire from heaven, a third of the trees are burned up, a third of the, the plagues. All the different want signs and wonders that I believe Moses and Elijah will be doing in the time of Jacob's trouble. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. But Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Now if you remember the story about 
when Moses was still alive, you had Caleb and Joshua, and you had ten other people. I can't remember all their names, but I do. We always tend to remember Joshua and Caleb. Why? Because Joshua and Caleb, when the twelve spies went out to spy out the land, it was Joshua and Caleb that said, If the Lord said we can take them, we can take them. They were faithful to the Lord. They acknowledged Him in all their ways, and He shall direct thy paths. He said we can take them, we can take them. And the other ten said, no, we can't take them, no, we can't take them. Okay. I remember that. Then you get here and, it's, and you see this, and I can just envision the people looking at this city, because if you've read all, all the story about them coming out of Egypt, anytime they hit hardship, they whined and complained, whined and complained, and they start saying, we should go back to Egypt. Oh, it would be better if we died in Egypt. They were whiners and complainers every time they hit hard times. When they came up and saw Jericho, I can see them going, there's no way we can do this. And Joshua, being the man he was, like with Caleb, saying, if God said we can do it, we can do it. God said we can do it, we can do it. Oh, by the way, God, um, how do we do it? Acknowledging God in all your ways? Like, God, how do we do it? I believe you. You said we can do it. He, he corrects the people. We can do it. But then he turns to God and goes, how do we do it, Lord? How do we do it? Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war. He's directing their paths. He acknowledged God. He's directing his path. And go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. So the first day they do it once. The second day they do it once. The third day once. Fourth day once. Fifth day once. Sixth day once. But on the seventh day, they do it six times. It's almost like they're recapturing those six days on the seventh day six times. And the seventh time they went around, because it's the seventh day, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when... They make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall flat down, shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. He acknowledged the Lord, and, and Bob says acknowledge him in all, their, all your ways. He's acknowledging him in this specific situation with Jericho. And God is directing his path. Today we're supposed to acknowledge God. And this is how he directs our path. We get the Holy Spirit when you get truly saved and born again. Repentance towards God. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. And after God saves you, he gives you a new life, a new birth. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. The Holy Spirit comes in. And this is when we acknowledge God. We go, Lord, is this the right thing to do? We learn it through the Pauline epistles, primarily. But like we're learning today, instruction righteous, the whole word of God. Instruction righteousness. We can learn how to please God, how not to please God. How to do what's right and make God say, well done, thou good and faithful one. Or how to fall flat on our face and disappoint God. Okay, What angers God, what pleases God. You know? But we see here, he's acknowledging God. And, and he's directing his, his ways. Now, jump down to Joshua 6.15. Jump, jump down to verse 16. I have my notes here. So, so I read my notes because sometimes I have stuff underlined or highlight, bold, saying I want to emphasize this, I want to make a point on this. But make sure you have your King James Bibles open and follow along for two reasons. One of the big reasons we say to have the Bible open, a little side note, is make sure I'm not lying to you. That is true, that is true, that's a good one. I'm, make sure I'm not lying to you, because I can still make a mistake in reading. <laughs> we all do sometimes, uh, and slip up, and I, I skip a word, or I say the wrong address, forgive me. Um, I, I need to focus more on that. But one of the ways you follow along is make sure I'm not lying to you, but the other way you follow along is if, when you actually follow along, it helps it hide it in your heart more. What you learn, you retain more. When you're following along with the Bible, you're opening it up and you're reading as I'm reading and you're following along. When you're just sitting there doing whatever it is you're doing, if it's the first time you watch a Bible study, follow along. Second time, follow along. 
After a while, you've watched it so many times, you can watch it while you're doing work. Listen to it when you're doing work. I'd rather listen to Alexander Scorvey just read the Bible when I'm doing work. But the whole point of following along, two parts. Making sure that I'm not lying to you. Be a Brian. Search the scriptures daily to see if those things are so. And to make it, help, it helps it hide it in your heart more. You, you retain what you learn when you're actually opening the scriptures and going through. But Joshua 6.16, And it came to pass on the seventh time, when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that is, and all that are therein. To the Lord, only Rahab the harlot, and to the Lord, I say, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that is with her in the house, because she hid the mes messengers that we sent. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing. This is important. Keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. It is very important to remember that. They were told not to touch anything or take anything. The gold and the silver, there are certain things that you, they were going to take, but it goes into the house of the Lord. But for individual people, you're not to take anything. You're not to touch anything, you're not to take anything. Okay? Verse 19, but all this, here it is, but all the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Getting a little ahead of myself, uh, we're going to get over to it. Zabdi, no, Achan, Achan, the son of Zabdi. When he took that gold, believe it or not, he was stealing from the Lord. Okay. Go to Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. I know we're jumping around because we're not trying to do all the story. We're just talking about, hey, they took Jericho. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. They were told not God. They acknowledge God and God in all his ways, and he, he's directing their paths. Do this, do that, don't touch this, don't take that, don't touch the accursed things. Okay. Joshua 7, 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And you look at one of the things he took was gold. A, a certain amount of gold. Well, we just read there, all the silver and gold were supposed to go into the house of the Lord. So not only did he touch the accursed thing, he stole from the Lord. Now, what did God command? Remember Joshua chapter 7, eight, verse 18? And ye and any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourself accursed. When you take up the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. Here you had Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the, the tribe of Judah, he took of the accursed thing. He said, where's this coming with Joshua? Joshua chapter 2, uh, uh, Joshua chapter 7, I'm sorry, Joshua chapter 7 verse 2. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Be Best Haven, on the east of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. He was sending men to spy out the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai, and they returned to Joshua and said unto him, remember this is the men saying it, and said unto him, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. This is the council of men. Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither too. In other words, these guys are easy. They're, they're nothing. We can just send three thousand people and take them. For they were but a few. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. What went wrong here? Some of you already guessed it by the subject of this study. Where did Joshua consult the Lord, acknowledge the Lord in all their ways, and say, Lord, they're saying three men can take it, but what do you think, Lord? Should we send 3,000 men? Should we just charge at them? If you've learned the stories in the Bible about like King David, where they're told to go this way, they're that way, uh, God tells them different ways of doing things because God knows the path to victory. He knows the greatest path to victory. Today, it's through, the God, through, his, through his Son, Jesus Christ. The real Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. 
the greatest path to victory, the gospel, repentance, the gospel. Right? But he didn't acknowledge the Lord. Why did Joshua not seek the Lord's counsel for AI? Here's where we get to the first thing that can get in the way of you acknowledging the Lord in all your ways. If he had, God would have stopped him and warned him about Achan. He would have said, don't go up to Ai. Something stinks in the camp. The camp's accursed. Someone is taken from the cursed things. He would have warned him about Achan, what Achan did, and warned him not to go up to Ai just yet, that he needed to get his house in order and do some cleaning, get his heart right with the Lord. Why didn't Joshua do it? Okay. Proverbs 3 5 Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Isaiah 55 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, his thoughts, and lean not on your own understanding. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Return unto the Lord. Acknowledge him in all thy ways. And he will direct thy paths. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my way, saith the Lord. Joshua, the men come to him. Oh, three, three, we can do this. Three thousand men can take this. We can just do it. We can just jump right into the next battle without consulting the Lord. Your ways are not my way, the Lord says. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. God knew everything. Joseph, here's the thing. Joshua, he did not know about Achan. He didn't know about it. But God did. If he had acknowledged God, God would have told him. Brothers and Christ, in our lives, we don't know everything. But God does. We don't see everything that's going on around us. But God does. Do you trust him? Are you acknowledging him? For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. Okay. Now stop. They saw an impossible task with Jericho. And they sought the Lord. This is impossible, Lord. We've got to get across this big river. We, there's these walls of Jericho. This place is fortified. It just looks so impossible. When they saw something that was hardship, that seemed impossible... They acknowledged the Lord, and the Lord directed them. But when they saw that easy AI, that easy AI, oh, we can just send 3,000 men. That would be good. Two to 3,000 men, that would be good. If they're easy, we'll have them taken up. Well, we got this. We got this. God, you take a back seat. God, you, you, you go do your own thing, Lord. We got this. We're going to do our own thing. That's what's going on here. We got this. We do not even have to send many people, just, just two or three thousand. Have you fallen into this trap, brethren? When things are hard, you acknowledge the Lord and seek His saving grace. Lord, I've, I've, I've made a mess. I've fallen into a hole. I've made a mess. I've done it, Lord. To Lord. I've done it, brothers and sisters Christ. I have fallen flat on my face before because I was not acknowledging the Lord and I was trying to do things my way and I fall flat on my face and then I start acknowledging the Lord. Bad times happening, I acknowledge the Lord. When hardship happens, you start acknowledging the Lord. Help, you seek His saving grace, help, and wisdom. But when life is easy, when everything seems to be going your way, we just took Jericho. Everything seems to be great. We're unstoppable. We're on top. We're doing great. Everything just seems to be going right. Life is perfect. Are you still acknowledging the Lord when life seems to be going just right? What's one of the things that gets in the way of you acknowledging the Lord? When everything seems to be perfect and you seem to, it seems like you can handle it on your own. I've got this. One of the reasons why all things work together for good to them that love God. You're hiding God's word in your heart. And you're doing your best to live it. That's what loving God is, is keeping his word. Remember Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come and make our abode with him. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. 
Okay? All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Why do we tend to go through hard times from time to time? To keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. To keep us acknowledging him in all our ways. Because what happens, and brothers says Christ, you probably have testimony after testimony. I'm not the only one that this has happened to. That when things are going so great in your life, you tend to do this. Well, I'll still read a little bit, but I'm not acknowledging the Lord anymore because I've got this. Everything's great. I can make the decisions. I, I've got this. I can handle this. You take a back seat, Lord. I've got this. What gets in our way of acknowledging the Lord in all our ways is if everything was perfect. That's why everything's not perfect. Today, one of the biggest lies in the world today is they're trying to feed with these easy believism, false gospel of easy believism, where you just have head belief, in other words, head knowledge, you know what Jesus did, why he did it, you're not truly saved, and, you're, and you come down here and you try to live your best life now. Your best life now. You can live your best life now. No, our best life is up there. Down here, we're going to have hardship. The Bible says we're going to have trials and tribulations down here. Why? To keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Because God loves us. He knows that if everything was going perfect, look at the whole old Bible, all the stories in the Bible, and everything is going great. We're, I'm, I read the Bible, and I'm like, praise God, they're, they're turning to God, they're doing what pleases God. Everything's going great. They stop acknowledging God. What happens? Everything falls apart. God knows everything will fall apart if you stop acknowledging Him. and Stop letting, stop letting Him direct your path. So, Right now, everything we just read there, what I believe Jer uh, Joshua did wrong was is he didn't acknowledge God. He acknowledged God with Jericho because it was hard. I mean, how are we supposed to do this? It's so hard. Now we need God's help. But then when he saw Ai, the men of Ai, oh, they're weak, they're little, they're just, they're nothing. We can just send 3,000 people. They have a million, they have, I think when they put it together, they had like three to 600,000 soldiers, but about a million people. But three, 300, 600,000 soldiers, and they're saying, oh, we only need to send two, 3,000. Why? Because they saw that it looked easy, and they didn't confront the Lord. And, not confront, I'm sorry, acknowledge. They didn't acknowledge the Lord and say, Lord, we're just going to send 300. Is this good? Is this okay? He didn't acknowledge the Lord. Now, when they failed, we just read that there, that they fled before the men of Ai. When they failed, how did... Joshua respond to what happened at Ai. Did he trust the Lord? Or did he start going off his own understanding? Let's keep reading. Joshua chapter 7 verse 6. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord unto the evening tide. He and the elders of Israel put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan? Uh-oh. Remember, we, I just, we didn't read it, but if you know the story, the Jewish people were always acting that way. When hardship came, when things didn't go their way, they're always like, better that we stayed in Egypt. Joshua was saying, better for us to stay on the other side of Jordan. To deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. Man's wisdom, world's wisdom, man's understanding. Lay not on thine own understanding. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around, environ us around and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto the, thy great name? Now, what do we notice here? A, he blames God. You brought us over here just to be slaughtered. Joshua did not once think to say, Lord, have I done something wrong? Now, Joshua didn't do anything wrong, but he never stopped to go, Lord, have I done something wrong? Brothers, in my life, the first thing I do when things aren't going away, everything seems to be falling apart, I fall down on my knees and I get back with the Lord and I do a value. That's what... Um, Communion's all about. When you eat the bread and you drink the grape juice, I do grape juice and I do bread, 
It's about an analy- going over your life and saying, Lord, is my life pleasing in your, in your sight? Am I living right in your sight? You died on the cross to pay for my sins, to give me a new life, and that life is supposed to be in your Son. Am I living in your Son? Am I living in Christ Jesus? We talked about this, the four definitions of living in Christ Jesus. Wisdom. What's the beginning of wisdom? Fear the Lord. What's the end of wisdom? Keeping His commandments. What's the whole duty of man? Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Wisdom. Righteousness. Be an ambassador for Jesus Christ, being a good representative of Jesus Christ, letting Jesus' light shine through you. Ministry of reconciliation, sanctification, okay, righteousness, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, getting sin out of your life so you can be a good representative of Jesus Christ. Having his righteousness imputed to us, we put on the breastplate of righteousness, says, belongs to God. I'm a God's servant. Okay? And the last is redemption. We're looking for that blessed hope with the life that we're living. That's what it means to be in Christ Jesus. And I go through all four of those things in great detail and look at my life and say, am I abiding by those four things? Am I living a life in Christ? Is it my fault that this is going on? So I'll be honest with you, the hardest times in my life in these last days, the hardest times in my life when things seem to be falling apart is because I took the reins and took it out of God's hands and I took the reins and said, I got this, I want to do this and I want to do that and I'm the reason I'm in this condition. I'm the reason I'm in this pit, falling flat on my face, going through these hard times. But there are also times, like with Joshua, he didn't sin. There's times where you didn't do anything wrong, you are living right, but God's got you going through something for a reason, and He'll show you. He won't leave you ignorant forever. He'll show you why you went through it. Okay? Always acknowledge Him in all thy ways. Lord, did I do something wrong? Did we as Israel do something wrong? Joshua never said that. Lord, have I done something wrong? Or have we done something wrong? He never said that. Lord, why is this happening to us? And what do we need to do to make it right? Lord, we failed. What do we do? He didn't do that. He started blaming God and started, and started uh, being sorrowful and complaining, saying we should have just stayed on the other side of Jordan. Amen. How did God respond? How did God respond? Joshua chapter 7, verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou upon thy face? It's a question mark. Why are you lying on your face? A, he's blaming God, and he's whining and complaining. He's not coming to God saying, Lord, he's sorrowful. There's men that died. They failed to take AI. He's sorrowful, and he has every right to be sorrowful, but he's not coming to God trusting him. He's leaning on his own understanding. Remember, trust the Lord with all thine heart. Notice that is a question. Basically, what are you doing, Joshua? Joshua is using his own understanding instead of acknowledging God and seeking his wisdom and the truth of what's going on. And God has to, he is seeking God, but he's not doing it in a good way. He's using his own understanding. How many of you have done that? Lord, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done this in my life? Why haven't you given me this in my life? And why are you allowing this? Why are you doing this, Lord? That's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong way to come to the Lord. You fall down on your knees. You humble yourself. Remember Jay, uh, Jay, Jacob, my servant Jacob. Not Jacob. Uh, jo- I get a lot of the names. But Job, sorry. My name Job. It's all J's. They start with J's. Job, he, 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 he abhors himself and he repents in dust and ash. He falls on his knees before the Lord. Okay, our attitude should always be to humble ourselves before God. We could be at fault, or God's just having us go through something for a reason, to to glorify Him, for His glory. We're going through something for His glory. We still need to humble ourselves before God and remember who God is. Some people say you're getting too comfortable, too complacent with God, treating Him like He's just some best friend, buddy that you can joke around with. 
Uh, no, he's God Almighty. Jesus is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. I'm sorry, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Some people tend to forget Jesus is God Almighty. When you come to Him, you're to humble yourselves. Don't blame Him. And I've done this. I've caught myself whining and complaining before. Come to Him and ask Him, Lord, did I do something wrong? Am I going through something that you want me to go through for your glory? Can you show me why I'm going through this? But more importantly, Lord, whatever happens, can you give me the strength to go through it? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Give me the strength to go through it and not and be a good ambassador for Jesus Christ. Remember that righteousness that's imputed to us. We represent Jesus Christ. Help me not to let you down and set a bad example as I'm going through these hard times. But Joshua 11, Israel hath sinned. God told them what happened. Israel hath sinned. And they have all transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Now you read about the, what happened to Achan. We did this in another study when it came to worldly sorrow versus godly sorrow. The moment Achan took that stuff, he could have said, I'm, I should have taken it and repented. And thrown it back and said, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. He might have been unclean and had gotten thrown out the city for a week. Because you have to go outside the city for a week when you're unclean. He would have missed out on the celebration, probably, of when they took Jericho. He would have missed out on being part of uh, AI, AI and everything. He would have been outside the camp unclean for a week. When this happened, he could have came forward and said, I'm the one that sinned. I failed the Lord. Please, Lord, falls on his face before the Lord. Have mercy. Here's the stuff. But he didn't. He hid it underneath his tent, buried it under his tent. All his family knew about it, and all his family had a hand in that, in that sin, in that curse. And what Joshua has to do is they have to start doing lots. And what a lot is, is you know, not exactly, sometimes it's dice, sometimes, you know how, I don't know if you watch those things where they have the straws, where people draw straws. They, have, they put straws in their hand, and one's a very short straw, the other are the same length, and from the top they all look the same length. But you can't tell because it's in the hand. And they have people draw straws. Oh, you draw the short straw. You're it. You're the one that's doing this. You know, that kind of thing. They're drawing lots. But they draw lots and they have to separate all the 12 tribes. They do lots for the 12 tribes. Okay, this tribe gets taken. Um, it was the tribe of Judah. Then they draw lots again and say all these great families within the, the, the princes in the tribe of Judah. Okay, it's this prince. Then they draw lots again to see all the different families within that family. Because it's a huge, like I said, over 100 million people, around 100 million people. They do lot after lot after lot, and the man refuses to come forward and acknowledge his sin and repent. And then it gets down to where the lot just finally falls right on him. And then he confesses. That's not... That's not Repentance when it's sorrow towards God, that's sorrows of the world. He got sorry because he got caught. He was hoping that it, somehow, by some miracle, I won't get caught. I won't get caught. I won't get caught. He wasn't sorry for what he did towards God. He was sorry that he got caught. That was a whole other study. All right. So you see that he didn't acknowledge God in all his way when it came to Ai. Ai. Why? Because... I believe that in our life, if our life just gets so, everything's just so great, I got everything I could possibly want. That's why God doesn't give us everything we could possibly want. I got everything I could possibly want, and I'm living my best life now. We stop seeking the Lord. We stop looking towards Him. We stop looking at, for Jesus Christ, that blessed hope of the life that we're living. We stop acknowledging Him in all our ways, trusting Him with all our heart. Like I said, I've seen brethren, this gets closed when everything seems to be going great. Your prayer life starts fading when things seem to be going great. Uh, we still need to acknowledge God in all our ways. Now, hmm, what happened to Ai? What did Joshua do? He consulted the Lord. He got back on the right path and started acknowledging Him. Joshua chapter 8, verse 1. You jump over to Joshua chapter 8, verse 1. Joshua 8, 
Verse 1. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and rise and go up to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king, as thou didst unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourself. Now he's saying you can take some things for yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. And he starts going in and telling them how to take Ai. Ai. It took, it took, <laughs> they got so excited about Jericho that they started falling in the trap of, I can do this. I've got this. We don't have to consult the Lord. We don't have to talk to He brought them back down. So when it's sent in the camp, but now they're back to where they're supposed to be, acknowledging the Lord in all their ways. And He will direct thy steps. Okay. Proverbs 3, 5, Trust the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. I'll say it again with Isaiah 55, 6. After everything we just went through, that whole story, Joshua couldn't see everything. But God could. That's why we're to seek God in everything. He sees everything. He knows everything. We don't. And when you start getting puffed up and thinking, I've got this. I know it. I, I know it. I can see everything. I know everything. I see it. They act, we act like we know everything. We see everything. And we got this. And we can make the decisions and everything on our own apart from God. And Remember Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. We'll get into uh, King Saul. King Saul tried to seek the Lord after he had sinned and sinned and sinned and, fell and failed to acknowledge the Lord in all his ways. And it got to the point where he sought the Lord and he couldn't be found because he had dug himself in such a big hole. Now this is Old Testament though. New Testament, if you seek the Lord, truly seek the Lord, you can find him today. The time of the Gentiles. If you're truly seeking the, the Lord, he will show you the way. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. Like I said, Achan, we didn't go over that study, but we have another study. You know, godly sorrow versus true biblical, uh, godly sorrow versus worldly sorrow. Okay? Forsake his way. He could have repented. From, Lord, let's see. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God knows all. So we see, brothers and Christ, when all seems to be going well and all seems to be perfect, we drop our guard. Remember, we're supposed to be sober, we're supposed to be vigilant. We drop our guard. We're always supposed to be looking for that blessed hope. We're supposed to have our eyes on Jesus Christ. We drop our guard and we don't acknowledge Him. We don't acknowledge the Lord in all our ways. And we start to rely on our own selves. Lean not on your own understanding. We start going off our own understanding, our own selves, instead of trusting God. Now, was this the only time that uh, Joshua failed the Lord and not acknowledge him in all his way? No, it isn't. Now, Joshua failed again to acknowledge the Lord in all his ways. Turn to ja chapter 9. We're moving along. Chapter 9, verse 3. Joshua chapter And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they did work willily and went and made it as if they had been ambassadors. And took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up. They're getting ready to put on a show. They fear them and they get ready to put on a show. Now, remember, God told Joseph, uh, Joshua and the people of Israel, when you go in there, you, you, you run everybody out of the land. You either run them out or you wipe them out. That land is yours and you don't want anybody in there. Okay? Verse 5. And old shoes and clouded upon their feet, and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provisions was dry and moldy. 
And they went to Joshua unto the camp of Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. That's the deception they're putting on. They're putting on like a, a show, a play, deception, that they've come from a far country. Now therefore make a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure ye dwell among us. So the thought came across that they dwell among us. And how shall we make a league with you? Because God said, no, you run everybody out. Wipe them out, run them out. Now right here, why did not Joshua seek the counsel of the Lord? Proverbs 3, 5 again. Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. We're going to get into this. Why didn't Joshua acknowledge God when it came to these people? I want to show you why. Joshua 9, 8. And they said unto Joshua, okay, Joshua comes into the picture and says, wait a minute, peradventure you dwell among us. And they said unto Joshua, we are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said unto him, from a fiery far country thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him. And all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was at Astroth. You know what it sounds like is going on right here, Brother Spice? It sounds like flattery. They're playing to Joshua, and they're puffing him up with flattery. Psalms 12, I was looking at flattery in the Bible. Psalms 12, 2. You don't have to turn here. Psalms 12, 2. They speak vanity, every one of his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Okay. They feared him. They were going to get wiped out. They feared him. So they started using flattery. Starting to puff him up. All the great things that the Lord has done through you guys. You guys, you, you're, you are great people and, and you're just so great and you're doing all these wonderful things. Flattery. Psalms 12.3 says, The Lord shall cut off all cut off all flattering lips and the tongues that, that speak proud things. Proud things. Flattery. Proverbs 7.21 With her much fair speech, she causes him to yield with the flattering of her lips. The, the, uh, she forced him. You know what really gets a man down? Uh, not acknowledging the Lord is, uh, what do they call it, feminine wilds, women using their, trying to seduce, there's the word I'm looking for, seduction. But they do it through flattering lips. Politicians today, through flattering lips. But if you sought the Lord, you realize they're not, they're not in line with our Lord and Savior. They're not in line with His book. They're not in line with His word. They're servants of Satan. But they'll lose flattering lips. Oh, the great. They'll talk about a God or gods. Uh, they'll talk about how they're Christians. They use flattering lips. Proverbs 20, 19. He that goeth about as a tellbearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. I think what Joshua got caught up in was all the flattering. You guys are so great. Your God is so great. You guys did this, and you guys did that, and you guys did this, and your God did this, and your God did that. What causes us to stop acknowledging the Lord in all our ways? When the enemy comes along, because they're supposed to be the enemy, when the enemy comes along and starts using flattering lips. Oh, yeah, well, that's true, you know. Yeah, yeah, I did do that. Yeah, that did happen. Yeah, God did that for me. It was great and everything. And they get you to, they get you to your mindset off of acknowledging Him, seeking God. Joshua 9, 11. Let's keep going. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants. Therefore now make ye a league with us. We're your servants. You're so great. We bow down to you. 
flattering. Verse 12. This our bread we took, caught for our provisions out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry and it is moldy. And these bottles of wine which we filled were new, and behold, they be rent. And these are garments, and our shoes are become old by reason of a very long journey. Romans 16, 18. You have to turn here, but Romans 16, 18. For they are such that serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own bellies, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Now, Joshua was not supposed to be simple, but why is he acting like a simpleton? Why isn't he saying, okay, you guys sit back. I'm going to go consult with the Lord. I want to seek the counsel of the Lord. Is this right, Lord? A, it could have been true. But is it still the right thing to make a league with them? Did they consult the Lord and said, Lord, should we be making a league with these people? Are these very ungodly people? Are they worshiping Balaam? Are they worshiping uh, all these other false gods and everything? Should we even be making a league with them, period? They didn't consult God. And we see that there's good words and fair speeches. And they're being deceived. Joshua got deceived. The princes, as we're going to find out, they got deceived. Acts 17, 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things are so. Brethren, you will have people in your life that use flattery, that try to puff you up. They see what little pride might be there and they go in there and they... Imagine that pride's like a, an inflated ball, like it should be, a ball that's flat with almost no air in it. And they come in with that pump Good words and fair speeches, flattery. And they start pumping that ball up, and that pride, and that pride. Oh, you're so great. Oh, you're just awesome. You have people in your life that use flattery and good words and fair speeches. Do you pray over the scriptures? Seek the counsel of God. That's why I push it so hardcore that when there's a brother or sister in Christ that tries to give me the glory, to give me the praise, I correct them on the spot and tell them, give God the glory. Give God all the praise. Give God all the glory. I don't want my pride puffed up. I've seen men on YouTube that used to be great men of God and they've been done in by pride. Bitterness that turns to anger and pride. And they went from being selfless to being selfish. It's all about them. Living the life that they want to live. Their dream life down here. Doing what they want. Doing things their way. And what do people do? They puff up their pride. Oh, you're the greatest ever. This is the greatest YouTube channel ever. You're the only Bible-believing preacher on YouTube. And so on and so on. They're, 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 they're puffing him up so that he doesn't go to this. Men in ministry, that they don't go back to this. And so them start drifting from this. And start doing things their way and making their own decisions. Apart from God. Brothers, it's right. Do you pray over the scriptures seeking the counsel of God? When someone comes to you and they, it seems too good to be true and it's flattering lips and everything, do you consult God? Do you, do you trust God with all thine heart to get into the scriptures and lean not on your own understanding? Well, it sounds good. I mean, look at all these victuals. They're, they're old. The bread is old. The bottles are spent. And man, well, it sounds good and it looks good. It has to be good. You know, it looks like a sheep. It's making a little weird noise, but it almost sounds like a sheep. It's got to be a sheep. Lord, if you consult the Lord, you realize there was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But it looks like a sheep. It sounds like a sheep. It's got to be a sheep, right, Lord? Do you seek the Lord's counsel and say, Lord, is it a sheep? And see if those things are so. When someone's saying something and flattering you, do you still seek the Lord? Hey, that might sound good. First of all, be careful of, of people being respecter of persons and worshiping you, men in ministry. Be careful of that. You always have to put yourself down and say, hey, give God the glory. Give God the thanks. Worship Him, not me. It's His Word that's the final authority. Not my Word. His Word. And when my Word lines up with His Word, it's because we're going off the Word of God. And when my Word doesn't line up with His Word, you're to go off His Word. You're not to follow me. You're to follow the Word of God. Or do you get distracted and fail to seek what God has to say on the matter? 
you get distracted. One of those distractions is life can be great. We just read about that, how life can be just so grand and you, you stop seeking the Lord. Everything's easy. Everything, I got everything I could possibly want. God doesn't give us that. Why? Because we'd stop seeking the Lord. But in this situation, you have someone giving you flattering lifts and, oh, you're just so great and you guys are so wonderful. I'm not even worthy to, to be in your presence. Now, with Jesus Christ, that's true. Remember John the Baptist, whose shoe lasts it, I'm not even worthy to unloose. I'm not worthy to even be in your presence. P uh, Peter, when, Je when he saw what Jesus did, the miracle, he fell on his face and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am full of sin. I'm not even worthy to be in your presence. That's Jesus. When someone starts treating you that way, they're, they're appealing to, back in the... In Genesis, ye can be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yea, hath God said. You really don't have to consult God. You can just go ahead and do what you want. Do it your way. All right. right here we see flattery. When people start puffing you up, brother says Christ, something's usually wrong. It's almost like a car salesman. They're trying to sell you something that you probably don't need or don't want when they're puffing you up. What are they trying to do? They're trying to sell the Jewish people in Joshua something they weren't supposed to do. Making a lead with them. Joshua 9.14. Go back to, if you're still there in Joshua, we're in, jump down to uh, we're in 14, yeah. Verse 14. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. They got deceived by the visual and they got deceived by the flattery. Verse 15, And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live, and the princes of the congregation swear unto them. And it came to pass at the end of three days that after they had made a league with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors. They lived in the land that was promised to them by the Lord. And that they dwelt among them. And you keep reading what happened to the inhabitants of Gibeon. I believe that God allowed Joshua and the men of Israel to be deceived for two reasons. The main reason we read there, they asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. God makes once it instilled in us, brother, it says Christ, that in every aspect of our life we're to acknowledge Him and seek His counsel in every aspect of our life. There's nothing that's supposed to be hid from the Lord. There's not, nothing that can be hid. But we're not supposed to be hide, trying to hide anything from the Lord. We're not supposed to try to be keeping back anything from the Lord. Our whole lives are supposed to be about Jesus Christ and His perfect written word. They didn't consult God. First, they didn't ask the counsel of the Lord. Second, the inhabitants of Gibeon feared God. When asked by Joshua why they deceived him, Joshua jumped down to verse... In chapter 9, verse 24, And they answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told thy servants how that the Lord thy God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were sore afraid of our lives because of you and have done this thing. They weren't going to go out and destroy them and try, Oh, we're going we're gonna to die in battle. They feared God of the Jewish people, the one true God. They feared him. Okay. If you jump over to chapter 10, verse 1, it says, in chapter 10, verse 1, we read, Now it came to pass when, here's a hard name, Adonai Zedek, Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai. Now this is the king, uh, the Gentile king of Jerusalem before the Jews take it, and it becomes the holy city, okay? Because some people say, king of Jerusalem? Yeah, this was the Gentile pagan king that was in the land that they were supposed to run out, and they did. Heard what Joshua had, ta had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, and he had done to Jericho and her king, so, so he had done to Ai and her king, and, ha and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. Made peace with Israel. The Gibeons. Why didn't they fall down on their knees and fear God? If you read, keep reading what happens, they decide to take armies. We're going to hire these people. We're going to hire this. And we're going to go out and we're going to try to take out this Jewish people. You had the one group that was, it might have been this guy, that um, 
you keep reading, they tried to uh, get uh, prophets to curse Israel. Right? They didn't fear God. They didn't fear the capital G God of the, of, of the whole world. The, here, the God of the Jewish people, the one true God. But the people of um, Gibeon did. Now, what also can get in the way of you acknowledging the Lord in all your ways is flattering lips. When you, begin to, when you begin to get visual, we saw that, when you begin to get visual, and you don't rely on God's Word, you start relying on visual. One of the things I can't do, I tried doing, I tried watching an old, old movie of Jeremiah, because I'm going through Jeremiah right now, uh, in my readings with the Lord, and I was like, I can't watch anything. anything if it's a book on uh, a brother's life in the past, like you have Sheffy, you have uh, John Wesley, John Wycliffe, um, John Huss, uh, you got uh, the, the movie that I put up there, um, The Printing, where it talks about the story of what Russia went through. I can handle that. But I, tr I got doodled down where I ended up getting rid of any movie or cartoon that were Bible stories because they couldn't follow the scriptures to save their life. And they're so visual, they can deceive you, they can confuse you, and they can get you to think things, this is how it happened, when it's not what happened. It's not what the Bible said happened. And I've gotten to the point where it bugs me, as it should, and it should bug you too, Brother Says Christ. You're, the simple cartoon on, on Joseph. I was watching that, I said, Joseph didn't say that. Joseph, uh, uh, or Jacob didn't say that. Joseph said, Lord, uh, Father, let me go to my brothers and everything. No, the Bible says that Jacob gave him a commandment to go check on his brother because Jacob was worried about his sons because they had been gone for a while. But the cartoon said, no. Jacob's like, you don't go. I don't want to lose you. You don't go. I don't want to lose you. And it was Joseph that was begging him. And you say, well, that's just a little incongruity. It bugs me that they can't follow the Bible to save their life. Their life depended. There was a gun to their head. They still couldn't follow the Bible when doing the stories in cartoon form or movie form. And you find out a lot of those movies, when I'm going, th I was looking through them, those Bible movies, they have secular, worldly actors in them that are part of Hollywood. And that's a whole other thing where they're doing a lot of rituals and satanic rituals and stuff. And they worship Satan. Hollywood worships Satan. The music industry, you worship Satan and so on. And they're putting together Bible, so-called Bible movies. But the point is, is when you start getting into flat, mainly I'm going to focus on the flattering lips, not necessarily the visual, but be careful of the visual. Stick with the, this. This is what I prefer more than anything. If I want to read a story about the if I want to hear the story about something in the Bible, I'll turn to the book itself and read the story because that's the only way to get the full story, the right story, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. You try to rely on, the reason people are so ignorant of scripture is because they rely on those movies and those cartoons. That didn't happen. I remember talking to some brother, that didn't happen. This didn't happen. Really? Read the book. This is where you need to be spending your time. Not on the 50s TV screen. Spend most of your time in the book. Doing Bible studies like we're doing today. But what also can get in your way is acknowledging the Lord and Get in the way of acknowledging the Lord in all your ways, flattering lips, and good words, and fair speeches. Brother says Christ, do not fall for it. Okay? Do not fall for it. Always be a Berean and check with the Lord through the scriptures to see if those things are so. That has to do with people too, Brother says Christ. The spirit of discernment. Saying, Lord, you come to the Lord and you ask and say, Lord, is this person genuine? Is this person true? Does this person have good intentions? They put on the show like their heart's in the right place, and they put on the show like they have good intentions, but do they really have good intentions? It looks like a sheep. It sounds like a sheep. Lord, is it really a sheep? And God will show you if it's really a sheep or if it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Finally, brethren, I want to end it with this. Don't make that mistake, okay? When life gets, it seems to be getting great, you need to buckle down and, and start acknowledging the Lord even more. So you don't fall into that trap of stop acknowledging the Lord when times seem to be great and everything seems to be going your way. You have victory, victory, victory. Make sure you're still acknowledging the Lord. 
in all your ways. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. Joshua 24, 14. People say, well, you really kicked Joshua. You really kicked Joshua. Yeah, in these two areas I do. And it's not just Joshua. We're going to be going through the whole Bible. All of mankind, including this man right here, there's times in my life where I have failed to acknowledge the Lord. I got this, Lord. I can do it. Now, I didn't say it like that, but my actions are where my heart... I always say that. You need to be your word, what you say, and your deeds, your actions need to line up. And your act, have you ever heard that saying, your actions speak louder than words? Oh yeah. Okay. My actions said, Lord, I got this. Take a back seat. Chill out. I got this. I'll, 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 I can, I'll, I'll make this decision. I, this is really what I want. I got this. But to give Joshua good credit, he loved the Lord. He feared the Lord. He loved his commandments. He feared God. He trusted God. Remember Joshua and Caleb, the only two of the 12 spies that said, if God said we can take it, we can take it. No matter how strong the people in that land look, if God says we can take it, we can take it. And this is at the end of Joshua, Joshua chapter 24, 14. It becomes a big scripture that we all love and a lot of people use and have hanging in their house. Joshua 20, 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. In sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Joshua made mistakes, but he loved the Lord, and he did his best to serve the Lord. Brother Jesus Christ, we make mistakes. But we learn from our, our mistakes. We need to learn from these mistakes. We can learn from other people's mistakes. That's why we're going through this for instruction in righteousness. Verse 15, And if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And he did. There's times he got distracted. What was the two? We're going to go over it real quick. What were the two ways that he got distracted? from uh, acknowledging the Lord in all His ways, Proverbs 35 and uh, 6. Trusting the Lord and acknowledging Him in all His ways. When times were great, when they had victory, victory, everything's great, 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 make sure you double down, brother says Christ. When things seem to be going great, make sure you're doubling down and you're going through your life and saying, Lord, am I doing right? Is this right? Make sure you're acknowledging God in all your ways, no matter how great your life is. It seems to be easy to do it when there's hardship. When things are falling apart, it's easy to acknowledge the Lord and seek His help and His, His, His wisdom. But what about when times are great? Also watch out for the flatterers. The people, the snakes that sneak in and use flattering lips, good words and fair speeches. And they flatter. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Every step I take, thy word is a lamp into my feet and a light in my path. This will shine a light on every step you take. Whichever direction God has you going in. Remember it says he shall direct thy paths. The Bible perversions change that and say make your path straight. That's not true. That is not true. That's a lie of Satan. That's a satanic Bible. He will direct thy steps. No matter where you're going, whether it's uphill, rocky path, hardship, easy times, bad times, wherever he's got you going, he'll direct thy paths. Right. Do not let good times keep you from acknowledging God in all thy ways through prayer and the Holy Scriptures, and do not be deceived by flattering lips and good words and fair speeches. Remember, brothers and Christ, we're supposed to be chapter and verse. We need to get back to that. A lot of men on here are starting to get to becoming more talk, 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 walk and talk. I, I loved our walk and talks, but that was supposed to be a small, like, not even 10% of this ministry. Most of this ministry is preaching the Word and getting King James Bibles to people who want King James Bibles. Okay? It's all about God's Word and preaching it and hiding it in your heart and living it and staying in it every day and praying over it. Prayer. Okay? But a lot of people online, they're becoming talk shows. They're becoming reaction shows. Okay, here's my feelings and opinions show. 
oh, this, this is the world preaching the world show. And it's just a show. World, the world, the world, the world. We need to get back to chapter and verse. But this is Christ. We need to get back to acknowledging God in all our ways through the Holy Scriptures. That's why we have them today. So I'm going to end this study with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next study.